right, everybody. My next guest is a Long Island born comedian, now South Carolina based with an affinity for self depreciating and observational humor. Here she is, the one and only Erin Locke. Erin, how's it going? Going good, Don. Thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to it. Yeah, this is awesome to have you have you here. And so now you're originally Long Island. Um, yes. Where from? Whereabouts on the island? Uh, so like now that I'm not there anymore, I usually say like I'm from Long Island. If someone knows it, they're like, "Oh, where?" And I'm like, right. "Suffolk County." And I'm like, "Where? Smithtown? <laughs> really? No, actually, I'm from Wisconsin." Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I did it. I lived in North Carolina for a long time. I lived in North oh, Carolina, nice. yeah, for about twelve years in in the Raleigh area with the Carolina Hurricanes, which is supposed to be both Carolinas team, <laughs> but um, and it was the same thing when you run into another Long Island person. First, they say New York. Oh, yeah, me too. What part? And Long Island. And what what county? And then you know, Suffolk. And then you get warmer and warmer. And then finally you say your town. And it's like, oh, I'm all the way, you know, out east oh. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If I were to start with Wisconsin, people would be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, I forgot <laughs> to ask. Am I allowed to curse on here? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, There's, great. You got free free reign. Do whatever you want. Love it. You know, you just got to, you know, YouTube might, uh, you know, if we get into certain subjects, <laughs> demonetize, but we're all good. Um <laughs> Another thing I noticed, I was like looking at your Facebook page. Your is your maiden name Sills? Yes. And I'm Sill. So I'm wondering. I saw. I, yeah. I swear when you messaged me, I was like, oh, <laughs> I wonder. We, we may be related. You never know. You never <laughs> and know. There's, and there's Sills Road on Long Island. Yeah. I would like to claim that it's mine, but it's definitely not mine. It's, it, I claim that it's mine too, but I know that it's more yours than mine because I'm, when people would, because Beverly Sills, right? I'm Beverly Sills. As general director of the New York City Opera, I help recreate operatic lives on stage. As national chairman of the March of Dimes, Mother's March on Birth Defects, I wish I could recreate many lives I've seen. Everybody always. When they meet me, they'll say Don Sills. I'm like, no, I'm just one Sill, just one of. <laughs> but you are, sill. yeah, but you you are actual um, Sills, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You got to take a picture with that road sign next time you come into town. I should. I should steal it. I always <laughs> want. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. Like I remember as a kid, our friends used to steal signs like that all the time, and I never got that sign. So it's. I'm in my 30s now. I feel like I can talk myself out of a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and and now, but now you're still a sill at heart, I, I would assume, but now you're a, a lock and you got married and, and that's a beautiful thing. So is it oh, hard giving yeah. up the name? It, like, I always wonder that. Is it hard to give up the name? It was at first, um, especially because I was, I was an, uh, an athlete for my whole life. So, you know, in athletics, a lot of people call you by your last name. So they're just like, sills. Um, <laughs> so people still do that, and they like they're like, "Oh, should I call you Locke?" And I'm like, "No, just keep going." Like <laughs> it's who I am to them, and right, right. So to me, I don't care, um, and he doesn't care either. But when I and when I first met him, um, everybody called him Locke, so they introduced him as Locke, and so I always just called him Locke, and like, oh, like gonna hang out with Locke, and like we were dating for like six <laughs> months at one point, and he was just like, "You can call me Ryan." <laughs> it's like. Oh. <laughs> he's like yeah, a little weird please change my name in your phone that's how i if somebody introduces me by their nickname they're always going to be known by that nickname always by their nickname that's how it's going to be forever you know mm -hmm. but um being growing up as a sills what are some of the sill jokes that people have given you through the years there's a couple of them that are like easy but i'm, I'm just curious what sill jokes if you ever had any did anybody oh, ever about get, like my last name like people will be like oh like windowsill like you ever get that kind of stuff oh my god every day of the week and like i don't know about you but we would get like telemarketers calling us and they'd be like hi can we talk to mr phil's and we're just like uh like <laughs> get rid of that that's not that's not good <laughs> we don't want to talk to you but yeah windowsill that I, we, I really didn't get up, made my last name made fun of like too much, but that was kind of it. And like when I had to explain it, I'm like sills, like window suit, like <laughs> I probably said it more than other people did. <laughs> my friends were very creative. We had, uh, you know, window sill, then it was imbecile, pencil, oh. clear sill. Oh. And then the very really nice. funny ones would call me vagisil. So those were. <laughs> oh my God, your friends are. <laughs> they were so mean 
but very creative. Very and creative. And you actually just reminded me about one that my friend made up. Um, I did. I started doing improv with him when I lived in Indiana. And I this was, I mean, I'd been in sales my whole life. I think I was like 27 when I met him. And he was just like, I came up with a really great nickname for you. And I was just like, oh, cool. Like, hit me with it. And he goes, missiles. Miss Sills. Right, yeah. Missiles. And I was just like, how has this not <laughs> happened yet my whole life? And I was like, this is the best. This is hands down the <laughs> best, like nicest nickname I that think is, anyone's ever gotten. That is good. I, ne I never heard that one oh. na until now. It's on the list now. Missiles. Missiles. So I'm going to call my daughters. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Also, you you are from Smithtown. Did you go to Smithtown West by any chance? So I was the last high school class that uh, senior class that was together. So I was West. Okay, cool. My my brother was a teacher there for a long time. Uh, Greg Sill, God bless him. I don't know if Greg you knew who. Sill. Yeah, he's taught uh, history. Greg yeah. Sill. Yeah. It's not it's not unfamiliar sounding. I'll yeah. have to check this out. Yeah, check it out. He he taught um, social studies and everything so he was a, oh know, my god yes i absolutely do oh my god yes i absolutely remember him i don't think he was one of my teachers but he was always like super friendly yeah he's a super he god bless him he, he uh, passed away a couple years ago and uh oh, you so know sorry. but but he's a yeah great guy great teacher and uh yeah so when i saw you from smithtown i wanted to know if you uh if you knew him as well because you know it's, it's cool there's a lot of connections here sills mr sills and then uh, yep. mrs missiles uh, yeah. I'm so I'm really so sorry to hear to hear that, but no, I remember him. Yeah. He was always very very friendly. Yeah, and like, not even being like my teacher. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. <laughs> knowing that he was a friendly person. Yeah, so. he he was awesome, and uh, yeah. So I'm just happy that you knew him, and that's that's awesome. that's cool as well. <laughs> so now we'll we'll get into the the comedy stuff because I know you know you you came up uh, mainly like an improv comic doing improv mm -hmm. and things like that. And did you start that in Long Island or did all your comedy stuff kind of start in South Carolina? So actually nothing started in South Carolina. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I've moved around quite a bit. So I was living in Indiana for three years, Madison, Wisconsin for three years. And now I've uh, been in Charleston for just over a year um, in South Carolina. So I started improv in Indiana. Um Took a couple of years there, took, you know, um, like three classes, loved it, joined a long form troupe. Like it was, it was an absolute blast. Um, and then I moved to Madison uh, for my husband's job. So then we were like, okay, so like I'll join, I'll see if I can join a troupe here. Um, and my dad got sick. So I had to go home to New York and take care of him. Um, unfortunately, he ended up passing that year, oh, which was God very, bless. very sad. I'm sorry but to he, hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but he had always kind of said to me, he's like, oh, like, I wish I was a comedian. Like, I wish I wasn't this like software engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, he had said that to, to me like my whole life. And I remember Ryan, my husband had heard it. And we went to a show. I, I wish I, could, I need to look this up because I, I think this is like the second podcast I've said this on now where <laughs> I'm just like, oh, like he, we saw a show and I emailed him and was like, I just saw this person do stand up. I'm going to get on stage with it a year. Um, he's like, I can't wait to watch you do it. And then he passed. Um, so my husband got me a stand up class in Madison when I came back um, to like, you know, connect, you know, connect with my dad and like sort of stay true to that promise. Right. Yeah. Um, and that was like one of the first things I did after he passed, like to get out of the house, to go do things and like kind of, get back into the swing of things right yeah and i just loved it man i i thought i was gonna i thought i was gonna hate it like i had friends when i was doing improv who do stand up and i was like hell no that sounds awful like <laughs> i'd rather just be up here with my friends and like right. don't get me wrong like i love improv like i know some people like shit on improv but i do not i loved it um i think improv is important I, I i love improv too and that's why i never understood that the, this kind of like this i i never really seen it firsthand but you always hear that there's some kind of thing with uh stand-ups versus improv that they don't there get is. along or something <laughs> i know right like it must suck to have an imagination <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with people like think, oh to have friends have fun like be creative like i those assholes what's and, wrong i don't know 
and have fun on the fly and making things, you know, making magic happen in the moment. Yeah, I love yeah. both of them. I mean, they're diff it's very different. Um, and you, but what's fun is, you know, you get to, you get to laugh in both places and you get to improvise in both places. And I think it's only gonna, I think it only has helped me doing stand up. It's, I think it's stand ups. Like if you're an improv person or vice versa, it's different muscles, kind of. Very, very it, different. It's like going from a Mac to a PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I completely agree. It's like you're, you're, when you're up there by yourself, I mean, that's, that's you. Yeah. You can play with, you know, the, the audience members, but they're not trained stand up comedians right. where you can like mess around back and forth, you know, like we're, you know, shit talking after the show or something like that. Like they're just idiots or not all of them, not all of them, right. but like some <laughs> of them are drunk idiots and like you're just like, oh, that sucked. Okay. Time to move on. But like, yeah. But with improv, people, know what they're doing like know what they're <laughs> doing and they're it's fun so going from improv now to stand up you kind of started stand up when the pandemic was happening right yes so that so, must have had challenges within the challenges yeah so i started my first class uh showcase was february 20th 2020 <laughs> so uh wow like, yeah, what a great day yeah so well, like two weeks later <laughs> Two weeks later, everything was gone. Everything was shut down, um, which it was kind of one of those things where like, you know, we started it and they immediately were like, write and get to mics, get to mics because we're doing the showcase and that better not be your first time on stage. Like you need to work, you need to work it. Like, and I was like, all right, let's do it. So like, I was just like writing, going to mic, writing, going to mic and like loving it and loving my class and loving the people in it and loving my teacher. And the showcase was fantastic. Um, got a great tape from it, which I now know is like one of the most important things besides networking to getting booked. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so I had that like right from the get go, like had a pretty decent tape. Um, and then everything shut down. And like, I remember, yeah, like, man, I was so pissed. Like, I, was, I swear <laughs> I was like, like, I heard it and I was just like, oh, uh, and it was at a comedy show that like they turned the TVs on literally right after it finished. It was like this fundraiser and they turned the TVs on and they were pretty much like, yeah. Oh God. What's his name? What's his name? Got COVID. That made that huge actor. He's in big. He's in Oh, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah, they yeah, wanted yeah. to call him like Tim something. Right. <laughs> That's name. right. So, with like, Tom Hanks and his wife were like the first celebrities. Yes. And everybody was so, like, oh my God, they're going to die. <laughs> At this hospital on Australia's Gold Coast, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson are being kept in isolation after announcing Wednesday they have the coronavirus. Yeah, so so Tom Hanks got it. And like in literally, I think the same broadcast, it was like Tom Hanks got it. And this like basketball game was canceled midway yeah. through because people had gotten it. Um, and then I was just like, oh, great. And then we like let, went home and then we like never left. Um, <laughs> you know and I was like I was like okay well I guess that was fun like I loved I loved it and I was just like oh this is devastating I'm really like this is really pulling me out of this sort of like suck hole of sadness um you know to right. write and to be creative and I was, I was so pissed and then finally someone had reached out to me that they were doing virtual stuff um I think it was Dean and Nina Martinez who was um you know, she runs Lady Last Comedy in Madison and she was going to be putting on weekly shows. And I was just like, yeah, let's do it. I'm super in. And then I like dove into Zoom comedy atmosphere, like connected with people all over the country, all over the world. And it was a good time. That was there was a lot of there was some positives to to the COVID time because it yeah. kind of leveled the playing field a little bit. Right. All comedians we're all kind of in the same boat, whether you're, you know, a, a list comic, you know, doing Netflix specials, or if you're an up and coming comic, just starting out, everybody yeah. kind of an equal playing ground. Like you could see in some of those zoom shows, you'd be like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, I can't believe this, you know, whoever is, is here with us. Like, you know, yeah, you know, I've and, done, and, I did a show. I did a couple of shows with Judah Friedlander. That was yeah. like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Like I, I was like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> Look, we're just a better country, okay? I mean, I, I, that's just the way it is. Um, and and we're a female country. You know, that's why it's America, not America. 
So <laughs> let's give the women a round of applause too. And it was also yeah, it, and um, also too as a training ground to to do comedy that way without like a like the audience you can't really hear them or react to them or you know and you kind of it's it's almost like you get practicing in the, in the silence yeah that's that yeah, yeah and you, you could really sure. play with your your set and your, and your timing that way you know oh yeah and you had to i and i will say the timing is super off from stage timing like i remember i had once i had gotten back on stage and then i i still do zoom shows uh every now and then um but I remember going back and like being like, oh, right, I have to give lag time because there's this flip that is complete silence that is painful. But like, you know, something's coming and wait for it to come and then you can move on. Like, right, right. it is slower. So like my seven minutes on stage is like much is just much longer online. There's um was Dustin Chafin. I don't know if you know him. He's a New York comic. He he made a whole album during the pandemic um, oh, nice. about the Zoom. It was all Zoom um, style, you know, comedy. And he made a whole album out of it. And I, I always, I, I love that he did that because it, it, for a number of reasons, one, he was able to get the creativity out of his system, still continue doing stand up, still put out oh, material, yeah. but also it kind of puts um you know, uh, uh, a marker on the time period. So when we look back at the history of comedy, you know, we have stuff like that. And all these Zoom you know, recordings, you know, kind of live forever, too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's a great time to to meet people and network and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. So. And uh, so uh, you just said his last name. And for some reason, my last name initiated with an S. You, you mean like C-H- Yes, uh, Chafin. Chaf yeah, Chafin. Ch yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I I did the World Series of Comedy with him. Okay, cool. So yeah, he was, he was one of the the semifinalists. He was fantastic. He did such a great job. Yeah, he's he's um he's a great comic. Been around for a while. I, I he's you know I, I think he's originally a Texan, but mm -hmm. he he came yeah. up in the New York scene. He's wears a cowboy hat sometimes and, and all the time. Yeah. I think I was like <laughs> all, I haven't seen him without one before. Yeah. <laughs> Super but, nice guy. So oh, didn't, that, didn't Marie Lifford also? She did like a, a couch special. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just seemed like a great idea. Once I heard there was a comedy open mic, I was like, well, I think I would like to, I would like to attend that. <laughs> um, but no one, no one told me to do it. No one said, oh, that's a great idea, Marie. Yeah. A lot of like comics like that, which were, yeah, and podcasts, everybody all of a sudden, you know, podcasts were breaking out. And, and what was cool is that comedians were finding different outlets to get the creativity out, to still be funny, to still uh, write jokes, but finding new ways to do it. And thank oh, yeah. God for Zoom. Imagine if Zoom didn't. It, it, I always said, like, imagine if this pandemic happened in like the 80s. Oh, man. <laughs> we'd, yeah. we'd be miserable. <laughs> No, we'd all die because we'd have to go outside and be with one another. Yeah, <laughs> human exactly. contact. We're like, ah, well, too bad. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I mean, I totally agree. Like, I remember, uh, like, I, I'm sure you had a, you know, COVID hobby that you picked up. And I was like, I feel like I should have, like, a thing that I, like, learn how to do besides, like, stand up. Like, that's, like, kind of quirky and weird. And I was like, oh, let me, like, see how much a ukulele is. And so, like, I, like, bought... Oh, like nice. a sixty dollar ukulele. <laughs> it was like, oh, I'll just I can learn the ukulele. Yeah, so then I was like learning it, and I think I have a YouTube video up still of like I had learned how to play when the Saints go marching in, <laughs> and I was like doing this virtual show um, through this production group, and like I that day like I posted a memory on Facebook of me uh, in like God two thousand nine when I had like this like super short like pixie cut. It was like you know, super blonde. And, but I was like at Bonnaroo and someone's like, you kind of look like if Karen went to Bonnaroo, can you <laughs> write a joke about it? And right, so right. I, that night, I literally, not that night, that day, I sat and I wrote to the tune of the Saints Go Marching In to when Karen goes to Bonnaroo. <laughs> and we like played it for the show uh, and it great. was a freaking blast. When Karen goes to Bonnaroo, she'll get annoyed at the things you'll do, like sing and dance and drink and screw. When Karen goes to Bonnaroo, it was just 
was just one of those things that like you're like okay like that would have never happened on stage like <laughs> and then I got to make uh two sketches and have them be you know pasted online and competitions and virtual tours and stuff like that and it was just like I, when would I have done that yeah exactly it, it's do you still do the Karen stuff the Karen material that could, oh, be a whole, no. that could be it a whole thing. It was just like a fun video yeah, that I did yeah. that's out there in the world right now. Um I need I'd love I love I know like some people shit on satirical comedy, like uh musical uh comedy as well, but I love it. Like <laughs> I don't care. I think it's great. So oh, I, I want to I want to be writing more. That'd be for sure. I, I always say about all that kind of stuff because there's like these purist type people that are you know in order to be a comedian you got to go deep within and you know it's got to expose yourself and all that and, and i think that's one like it's like music there's different genres of of comedy oh, so yeah. I, and i think as long as it's 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 all funny and, and uh well written i love it everything from ventriloquism the music comedy whatever it might be i, I you know and i don't understand those types of people that are like no it's only this one it's you know i i only will eat you yeah. know it's only chocolate i will never have vanilla <laughs> or strawberry or <laughs> yeah man i love it all i, I yeah. think that's what i love so much about it is you can literally turn around and be like okay well I'm, i want to try this now <laughs> yeah exactly and that's what i think is cool ab about what you're doing you've you're you're taking on and an all types of uh genres of comedy because it's what speaks to you and you know why have any walls or any boundaries just go for it man right you know why not and that's what's cool too you even do um corella deville comedy yes yes <laughs> oh man that's been so that's been probably the biggest surprise of anything um how does that happen how do you get started with corella deville <laughs> And, and making that into a con like are you like do you take the stage as her and do like a set as Corella? <laughs> yeah and my character of course had to be born in london you know she's a fashion icon could you imagine if she was born in like wisconsin <laughs> yeah so uh some which once again how zoom comedy brought this into my life i was doing a virtual show um, like once a month or, you know, probably once a month actually, um, with this producer, I was doing one month with him and all, and then I was, when things opened up, I went to New York and did his show at QED and just, and him and I are buds. So like, he just randomly called me just like, Hey, uh, I got, I like submitted for fun into, uh, what was the first one? Awesome con in DC have you ever done cosplay comedy before? And I was like, no, but that, that sounds like a really fun stretch to try something completely out of my wheelhouse. And I told him upright, I was like, dude, I have like no material. I wouldn't <laughs> I'm like, I love dressing up. I don't think I would have like a good costume yet. I would need to kind of find one. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. But like, would you want to do it with me? And I was just like, oh yeah. Like I just need to, you know, do everything, you know? And he was just like, okay, cool. You have three and a half weeks. I was like, what? <laughs> wait, wait, no, dude. I was like, it's like, yeah, you have three and a half weeks. And I was like, wait, so you're telling me I have three and a half weeks to pick a character, figure out a costume, and then write 10 minutes of brand new material like for this character. And he was just like, yeah, I think you could do it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, damn, that's a lot of trust, man. Um, and I think it was like three days before. And I've told him this. He knows this. It was like three days before the show, and I was just like, "I have three minutes." Like, <laughs> like it's hard, that. right? Ten minutes. I, at, yeah. I was like, I don't know, and it felt like a good three minutes, but it was like, and then I think, oh, at, so because the other three, the second three minutes, the, to bring it to six, I rewrote the Cruella Deville song, and I tried to play it on my ukulele. But it was so horrible. I had to drop it. Like it was just like it was so embarrassingly bad that I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. There's gonna be like hundreds of people here. Like, I just can't. <laughs> and then I started just because I, I was like, what's the problem here? And I was like, oh, it's because I haven't written for anyone but myself. Like, yeah. I'm only and like for I take directly from my life when I write. Um, so I was like, I'm not Corella Deville. I don't know, like 
what, yeah, besides, well, but you don't, you don't really see besides what she, you know, is a bitch, you know, and right, right, kill puppies or whatever. And so I was like, okay. And so I find, so for some reason, I picked her. I can't even remember why. I think it was between <laughs> her and Scarlet Witch. And the costume for Scarlet Witch was like 120 bucks. And I found this cool leather jacket for Cruella <laughs> for like 25 bucks in a thrift store. I was right. like, boom. <laughs> This is it. Corella, um, it is. Yeah. That's right. I had that's how much time I had to like right. choose. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, no one like I could make all this shit up. Like no one knows what Cruella was doing during the pandemic. <laughs> like no <laughs> no one knows what she does on dating apps. And so I was just like, okay, well that's now awesome. I've just like made this up about her and I love it. It's so we've done uh, we've done five so far. So we did Awesome Con in DC, Galaxy Con in Raleigh, North Carolina. Nice. Uh, Fan Expo, Chicago, and Canada. So that was one in Toronto. And then uh, New York Comic Con was our last one. My name is Arthur Dent, and this is the Multiverse Got Talent. Oh my goodness. It was really wow. So I never even knew there was a cosplay comedy scene. This is pretty cool. This is like n- new it to is- me. We haven't really seen a lot of it. There's like, I've seen like two companies. Um, I think one was in California, one was somewhere else. But they're, I, they don't seem to be super active uh, anymore. So it was really cool to be brought into this world, and then to then yeah. also him be like, do you know anyone else who'd be interested? And then I'm like going from my pool of people, being just like, who wants this? Like, yeah, yeah. This is like being built and groomed. Like, get your butts in here. I know a guy um, who would be, cool. yeah, he'd be perfect. He's an impressionist guy who does um, a Batman thing, but it's oh, Bat Trump. It. He does like a Trump impression as Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm the greatest superhero ever. I'm the best ever. He's like, I am so going to save you. <laughs> That's funny. In terms of GNN, Gotham News Network's fake news report about hydroxychloroquine, we're all taking it at the Justice League. We're all taking it. I'm taking it. Wonder Woman is taking it. Aquaman is taking it. The Flash, we're all taking it. Okay? Superman is not taking it, but Superman is invincible. Oh, uh, yeah. That's funny. Tell him to reach out to me. I'd be I happy will. to send his tape along. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like... <laughs> his name's uh, John Santo. He's a, a Long Island comic out here. John Santo. Santo. Yeah. yeah. You, you may have known him. He's been around the scene for a while. Yeah. On Long Island, I've but, definitely seen his name. I think in the Long Island group. Yeah. Oh, all right, so, I can't picture his face right now. So when you go to the uh, cosplay comedy dressed up as Gorilla, who? What other comics are waiting? Like, like, is there like you know? Tell me some of the other characters that are there. Yeah. And, and what they do, like, like you know, and who is there? Any like, who's the headliner one and stuff like that? Like, is there is there like a one that everybody comes to see or? Like, how's so, it work? Um, so right, honestly, right now, uh, we all sort of switch like order of who's going where. Um, so uh, Danny Rydell, she's just moved to New York. Um, she's in the city. So she does. Um, oh, God, she's going to be so pissed at me for not remembering her character. It's Star <laughs> Trek, something of nine. Oh, God, she's going to kill me. <laughs> Uh, oh, God, that I girl, like the one with she has a th- yeah, thing on her face. Yeah, the thing on her face. Yeah, and the tight bodysuit and all yes. that. Yeah, yeah. So I she, don't... so she does, so she does her. Um, buddy of mine did the Riddler. <laughs> That's a good one. Where what? you know it's it like speaks you know comedy when and the Riddler so in, you know um, yeah it like just to- it totally animated. works yeah. and he did a really great job with his costume but it was so funny because like he has his jokes for on stage but we're walking around. And people are like, hey, Riddler, like, tell me your riddle. And he was just like, totally stunned. I was like, dude, you have to have like one in your backpack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So then me as Cruella is just like, how do you make a barrel lighter? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> and then he says it to them and the guy's cracking up because he obviously can see that it's me. It's just like, you put a hole in it. <laughs> I was like, you can, t-, I'm like, you can take that one. I got it from Are You Afraid of the Dark? I think I, I got my as well either that or i actually got it from from an actual batman cartoon but i i know that that riddle because i remember you know trying to solve it mm-hmm. and then finally oh a hole you put a hole in it <laughs> but uh yeah so so when you're carilla deville now you're fully dressed up as carilla 
Yep. And and I did the new Cruella, the Emma Stone Cruella. That was an easier costume to put together. I think I'll probably I might expand um the costume a bit this year this year. And that's what's so hard about that. Like this is what's so hard is that because I am putting all this money into like dressing well, it's like, okay, well, I'd like to do other characters. Um, I'd like to grow into doing multiple characters or like one character on Saturday, one character on Sunday, but right. I just say we'll take a little bit more time. So I'm sticking with her. And what's nice is people are recognizing me now at the convention that because they went to the other one. Right. Like, yeah. oh, hey. <laughs> like, you know, that stand up. Are you doing stand up here? Oh my God, we got to come. And I was like, hey, I'm getting recognized more in the convention <laughs> world. <laughs> <laughs> the real world. And so the conventions of being good to you, like you're traveling around, you're seeing the world. You've been oh, yeah. to Toronto, you've been all over the place, uh, and you're killing. That's oh, Cruella. So good. And then you also have like, so like kids are there as well. And like kids know who Cruella is. And so I had this little girl just chase me down a hallway. And she was like, <laughs> Cruella, Cruella, Cruella and i was just like hey what's it going like you know it said hi to her and she was just like can i get a picture of you oh my god i can't believe i'm meeting you this is so great and like i forget because i don't i also don't have children and like i but i forget that they sometimes think that you're actually that person right yeah and so i like leaned down took a picture with her and i was like so like my name's erin what's your name and she was like bye <laughs> like, <laughs> <who left? laughs> I was like, oh, lesson learned. Don't do that. Just stay in character. I was going to say, yeah, because I was wondering if, yeah, you have to stay in character. Because I know working with mascots through the years in sports, the mascots always have to stay in character, even yeah. right until they exit a room. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. At Disney, you get you would get fired uh, on the spot. Like someone, I think, got fired at Disney because someone was have one of the people were having a heart attack. And so they took their head off to Oh, yeah. to them and oh. save them and they got fired yeah that's because a... they took their i was like no i think there was a lawsuit involved in that but like that's one of those things where you're just like i feel like you're taking it a little too far like yeah. life should come first that yeah be fine yeah if, if it's life or death everybody you know most people know maybe not little little kids but most people know there's a person in there <laughs> you're not <laughs> breaking the fourth wall or shocking anybody <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they are kind of strict about that man like uh especially in colleges yeah. college mascots are strict about that i know disney obviously now do you compare like when you see disney's cruella or like on in, in at disney world or something or other cruella people that dress up do you compare oh. and say oh you're not you're not a good cruella no, I don't. I actually, I could give a shit what they're wearing. I'm just excited to see another Cruella because it's it's not a character you see. Like, and so I'll see maybe two out of like thousands, thousands of people. And it's just sort of like, oh my God, you come here. We're taking a picture together. And like <laughs> just celebrating our evilness, you know? And, I, <laughs> and then- <laughs> That's what's so funny is that I'll also see other evil characters and like they want to take a picture with me because we're both evil and like so <laughs> I'm just like me and Maleficent are like taking a picture oh, together. Yeah. And, like, they just like I don't know. There's just something that comes over you and people like stop me to take just to take pictures of me. Like not because I'm a comedian or anything because they're just like I love your costume. I want a picture of Cruella and like like damn yeah I'm getting a lot of love here. <laughs> a lot of people love love the bad guy, you yeah. know. Yeah, and and uh, that's why I think it's cool that you chose Corella and and doing you know comedy because I think she it is a good character to do comedy off of because she has that dark side, like mm -hmm. you know wants to kill puppies and and all that stuff and like <laughs> you know like I I gotta check out your your act, man. And oh, see I would love that. It's it's fun, but the hard the hard part is because like my general comedy is a bit dirtier. Uh, it's not super raunchy or anything, but it's definitely not like you don't want your young children to see it. Um, but so with Cruella, because kids are there most of the time, it's like this is PG. And I, I think that was the other harder part. It just was a little it, very different than uh, what I had had done. But it's nice to have this in my wheelhouse now. So if someone's yeah. like, hey, I'll pay big bucks to have you at a birthday party. I'm like, I'm yours. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. People so you actually you know, do do children's parties, like you know, comedians. I do also do children's parties. Yeah, and those are the good paying gigs, man. You can you can get a five minute spot for five dollars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you can do a private show in costume and like make your own ticket. Yeah, a couple hundred. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't done that yet, but I I would try it once. I have a feeling I'd. <laughs> I don't know how I would feel about it, but you never know. I might love it. I used to be a camp counselor. I love kids. Oh, there you go. Now I think it's cool. Like, like the whole cosplay play world is, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't really understand it. And, and but uh, I've gone to a few um, comic book conventions and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. it is it is pretty cool. And there is like a whole counterculture of, of people that dress up and they really take oh pride in their God. costumes and and they... the things I've seen. Oh my gosh, the beauty, like the pageantry, the art, like. Oh, it is so mind blowing. Like I really didn't understand my cousin and her husband, they've gone their like, I think whole relationship to these and they make their own costumes and they like, she sews and she, she wow. makes her own clothes anyway. Like she's fantastic, but like they go all out and every time they did it, it was these characters I didn't know. So I was just like, uh, who cares? Like that. Right, right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like, it's hard for me to get excited about it because I don't know who they are. Right. Yeah. Um, but what's so cool is that, like you said, every, there's so many different genres and like, cause it's like, it's not just comics, it's right. gaming, it's yeah. anime, yeah. it's superheroes. It's, it's literally everything under the sun. And like, there's a place there for everyone. And it's that's what's so cool. cool. And when you walk around, you could feel the energy from everybody, you, you know, whether they're in costumes or not. It's just a, a there's a vibe, a very positive vibe when you go to those things. Absolutely. You know? Super friendly. Everyone just everyone's just enjoying themselves. It's been a it's been a real pleasure to like to join to join that community. And I want to I want to have a much more like, I don't know. I have my costume and my costume looks really good, but it's one of those things where like, I want something a little bit more elevated so I can look at, so people can look at me the way that I look at other people and being like, wow. Right. right. <laughs> and I think with the Emma Stone movie, that kind of put the, the, the character onto a next level now. So, you know, now mm -hmm. everybody knows, you know, it's modern day now. It's no longer, you have to re remember the dumb 101 Dalmatians movies. Right. You know, now it's like, <laughs> yeah, look at, you know, and, and it also presents herself as a, in her full badassness. Oh, totally. And like, I even ref I referenced that first movie in my set and like, everyone knows it. It's one of those things where like, you don't have to know it, but like, everyone knows it. Kids, adults, like teenagers, everyone's seen it. Everyone knows it. It's just one of those movies that like, it's like, oh, I'll just put up this movie on where <laughs> this grown ass woman wants to kill all these puppies. This won't put anyone in therapy. Like, <laughs> And now you also like, you, you also have your regular set. So you kind of split two different personalities. Like, do you, do you share material? Do you use some of the Corella, uh, Corella DeVille material in your normal set? Or is it just two separate? Two separate. Uh, I think I had one. I had one joke that skirted the line between the two, um, but it's a little bit. It's just like it's just over the line dirty, so it doesn't quite feel appropriate to use. I used it once because um, it was like the later show, and I was like, "Yeah, this isn't going to go well with kids." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you're not doing it for kids, but kids are there, and parents are there, and you don't want the parents getting pissed off because you know you said something borderline. Um, but so I did have one joke that would be used in both, but I dropped it for Cruella. But so besides that, yeah, it's all, all different. <laughs> and now you also uh, you did 14 different states, Toronto, three years. This is your three-year anniversary of doing stand-up. How many years total comedy world with the improv and everything combined? So you've been like, you've been doing this for a while. Let's see. Let's see. Seven. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I started in 2017 when I was in India, Indianapolis. Yeah. That Very was when cool. I first started. So, but it feels longer. Like I said, seven. I was like, oh, that doesn't feel so long. So I guess it kind of is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. When you look back, like, 
somebody said something the other day like about uh 2010 and they're like yeah it's 13 years ago and i'm like god 2010 is 13 oh. years ago <laughs> i know i feel so like my i feel like date trapped like I think everyone's yeah. feeling this. You've seen a million memes on it, right? Or it's just like yeah. me in 2023 still healing from my 2019. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These last few years are just like one big, long, you know, meld. Yeah. And I'm just waiting for to break it through to the other side already. I know. But it's been I'm... very strange. Yeah. So weird. And we're all going through it together. We all feel the same way. That's what's weird. Uh, it is. It is absolutely a collective feeling for sure. Yeah. It's just nuts. <laughs> I think we're in a different a different dimension or something. I think we <laughs> You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. You are crazy you also did the World Series of Comedy. Yes. Tell me about that, how that works. Because I think a couple of years ago, when I was in Raleigh still, I was supposed to cover that. Um, this guy was going to hire me. And then I was working in hockey, but then hockey... There was a lockout. This was like 2008, eight nine, and then the lockout stopped, and then hockey opened back up again. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't I do I remember it. Remember that? I'm a big I'm a Ranger fan. Okay, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and because again, they always have these contract negotiations and all the stuff. And it is day ninety six of the NHL lockout, and there is no end in sight. Mm -hmm. And um. But then they ended up doing. I think we lost a couple of games, like the beginning of the season, and they and they, so I thought the season was done, and I was going to go and do and cover this thing because they want to make like a reality show with the with the World Series of Comedy, and I was going to travel all around different clubs and oh, cool. cover it and stuff. So I was always, you know, my heart's in stand up always, and I was a little bit like bummed out that I had to go back to hockey. <laughs> I was like, ah <laughs> oh, man. But uh, but tell me how did you get involved in that and and uh, tell me through the process and and where you and, and we ended up in that. Sure. Uh, so I actually had first it was word of mouth honestly that I had first heard about it um, through someone who had done it the previous year. Um, and we were kind of talking about like the Zoom networking and how I was like moving, you know, down to the south and I was like, well, I've met a couple of people virtually. Like hopefully I'll be able to make it down that you know do something down there he's like oh yeah great another great networking thing is through the world series of comedy and da da da, da and kind of gave me this low rundown which i did not understand um and so i i did check it out and essentially you know thinking about the way that you apply to a festival right so if you you have your information you have your um either your press kit or your video and submit so what they do is they evaluate each video and give you a point value. This is based on what we saw here, your uniqueness of jokes, your stage presence, your this, your that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you get ranked amongst all of these people who apply. Excuse me, I'm just burp. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> uh, <laughs> and so... They have these 12 satellites. So the whole, uh, I guess I'll start from the end and kind of go to back to the beginning. So at the fi the finals are this um, this full week in Vegas competing, uh, which I was able to do last year, which was so much fun. Um, and it's not just performing, it's um, meeting with uh, producers and bookers and agents from all over the country, um, setting that up for you and not only meeting them, but also meeting more of the comedian. So that's what you're building toward to get to. And then during the year, there's 12 satellites. I think the first one this year is in actually in Vegas um, in February. And so what they do, the way that you get into a satellite to perform there is you need to be in the top 40 of comedians who applied to that satellite. So let's say like last year, like there's like 700 comedians that enter and like, you th all those people get ranked, but only this subset puts in for Vegas. And so the top 40 are really like, oh, this one's in second place. This one's in 15th and 30th. And but those are the top 40 people. And they're the ones who get to go gotcha. um, and who are invited. And that happens at satellites all over the country at um, like in at Mic Drop in San Diego. Uh, I know Comedy Cabana was last year. Um, McCurdy's in Sacramento, which was so damn fun. That I love <laughs> that room. Uh, like Laugh Boston. So like all these places on East Coast, West Coast, Central. 
Um, and then, so you kind of decide which ones you want to go to. And if you don't want to go, then you pull yourself out of the top 40 and then someone gets put in. And then when you're actually there, there's a wild card round for anyone who's in the second half of the group. I think that's like the last like 16 people or wild card round. You got to win to get into round one and then round. I think that it's like semifinals and right, finals, yeah. but it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of work, um, but they, it's a lot of work and it's amazing to so, sort of see it happen across the country. And I've made some fantastic friends there. Like I had met uh, this one woman, uh, Amy Brown. She performs in Atlanta. She's phenomenal. If anyone knows Amy. Um, <laughs> but like I met her at the North Carolina Comedy Festival and I met her very briefly. Like it was just sort of like, Erin, this is Amy. And I was like, hey there. And then we became Instagram friends and that was kind of it. Um, and I saw that she was going to be in Ohio with me. Uh, at the satellite in Maslin, Ohio, which we were like, where is that? <laughs> um, but I messaged her and was just sort of like, hey, I like recognize your name on the list. Like, let me know if you want to share her with a hotel room. Let's hang out. And like now we're close as hell and like gotten to, you know, go and stay with her in Atlanta. She's like come out to Charleston. And um, it's really fantastic, like how close you get, because now you've performed with these people all over the country and you're just like, hey, I remember you from over there. What is that? Like, <laughs> and you just start to make these friendships and, and connections. It's it's really wonderful. Yeah, it's networking all over the country. And, and you know, it, your, your uh, story is cool because, you know, you started during the pandemic when you was locked down and now it, it you probably didn't ever imagine it would bring you to all these places that you've gone to all the people that you got to meet all through, through comedy, what started this whole new journey through, through stand up that you might not have had. Uh, if you took up like, you know, so many other people baking bread during the pandemic, if you were just, uh, excuse me, I absolutely <laughs> baked bread during the pandemic. There you go. Everybody. Not yeah. going to try and lie about that, but no, no, you are 100% right. And I've talked to my, my best friend, the whole world about this. I was, I remember sort of being like, I don't want to like, I feel weird. It feels weird saying it because it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know, like things are going well. Like, right, right. Yeah. You don't want to say it too, out loud. Yeah. Don't say it too loud. Like, <laughs> I was like, things are going well. And we both completely agree that this would not have happened. Uh, it, it wouldn't have happened this way, this quickly, um, if I had started in 2017. You know what I mean? Right, if right, I started right. stand up when I started improv. Um, three years in i don't i don't think that i would be where i am uh performing the way that i am and touring around and traveling and uh, just i i just don't think it would have i think at that point i would have let's say i started when i was in indiana i would have met people in indiana and i would have known comics in indiana and that's this tiny little ball and maybe chicago right. you know maybe louisville but like this is that tiny little ball that i would have lived in and that had got burst wide open uh, with the way that I started. So I, I would completely agree. And there's no shame in that for me. No, no you way. I, mean? I like, think that's awesome. No what you did. shame. Because <laughs> here, like on, on the island, you see a lot of comics that are, are comfortable. They get comfortable in the local scene. And they're actually afraid to go outside of the yeah. scene because, you know, different audiences, different people, different, you know, different sense of humor or whatever. So they pigeonhole themselves on their own they just don't want to they're happy with what they're doing and how they're doing it mm -hmm. but so, uh, like, I, people here like me like right get yeah. me i gotta right. tell you guys mormons don't like me <laughs> 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 i had no idea i was like dude this room is the worst <laughs> like wow this is worse than i've ever done and like this whole side of the room was like having a good time the entire, I'm not kidding around, not a peep, not even a little like, mm, that was so amusing, like nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. And well, I was just like, I was like, wow, that was rough. That was, in, that was at the comedy caravan in Kentucky. And I was just like, <laughs> what is going on? And then like that happened to a bunch of comics. And I was like, oh, something, I was like, no, something's going on. Like this can't be, it wasn't just me. It was right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Cause and like, one guy goes up and he's just like, so what's your guys fucking pro like you <laughs> and like just goes after them. He's like, what do you guys do? Like, what, like, what are you like? They just kind of dug into them. And right. he's like, oh, we're from Utah. It's like, oh, you're more. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> oh, it was so funny. I mean, <laughs> he ended up getting them. Uh, but uh, oh man, it was hilarious. That's hilarious. That's going to happen. Like that's well, totally going to happen. For me, it was the Mormons visiting Kentucky that got know. me. Oh. It's just so weird. That why would a group of Mormons even want to, like, what were they thinking? Like, there was going to, you know. Like, everyone's like, oh, my God, people are so offended these days. These offended people shouldn't go to comedy shows. No, Mormon people <laughs> shouldn't go to dirty comedy shows. Yeah. Like, dry bar, totally fine. That is not going to happen at the comedy caravan, my friends. Right, exactly. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe they've only been to dry bar and they're just like, we love comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they oh. think they, yeah, we're huge comedy fans. We've seen all the dry bars. I mean, don't, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm just in dry bar at all. I love no, dry, dry bar, bar rocks. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I have a couple of friends who've, who've gotten some, uh, who've gotten some things published uh, through dry bar and it's fantastic. And like, and, I would love to have a long enough set, a good enough clean set to be able to do that that's such a huge accomplishment but like yeah <laughs> that's exactly it's, what i think happened. <laughs> it's it's definitely tough to, but i think the dry bar yeah that that's been um really growing in popularity too like a lot of comics get on that thing do like what an hour or so or uh, a half hour for some I reason i had a half hour in my head yeah, but it, it, think... may, it may be between a half hour and yeah. an hour um and like they because of the pandemic everything was pushed behind so i think a couple of people i knew like they you know recorded it like a year and a half before it was like actually released they're just like everything's so much better now like yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah right yeah, nobody likes looking at what they did yeah in the past it's like oh god yeah you know, like and I, I remember looking, you know, back at some of my old shows. I was like, ooh, like that wasn't terrible, but it like wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still not great. And that's the thing, it's like just continue having the common sense that to know that you are continually working on it. And when you think you're done, you're just gonna suck where you are. Right. Like yeah, yeah. You can that's never where be you're done. gonna live. Yep, you can never, never be done. done. Never done. There's no finish line. And That's so, gotta be so hard to like record something though, and then like three what months later be like, fuck, like I have this great tag. Right. And, like, yeah. Now I can't use it here. And like, oh, that's yeah. gotta be so hard. It wow. does, yeah. Like if you made a, an album or something, or yeah. or if, yeah, and then uh, and then it's stuck there for life. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> I know how I can improve that. Ah, this could be so much better. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I'm, I'm an editor and I edit videos and, and uh, music stuff for the sports. And I look mm -hmm. back at my old stuff and I'm like, oh my God, I can't even watch it. Can't <laughs> even watch the old stuff. But I can imagine it's probably the same thing with comedy albums or, you know, old yeah. sets. If you watch like an old set you did, you know, and, and then you kind of cringe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, wow, well, I did not look comfortable up there. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're always evolving. We're always getting better. So yeah. that's that's the good thing. Yeah, that's the positive. Absolutely. I think that's what's so cool about it. And like last year, um, one of the, so the, the uh, Chris Kelter who runs the, the club in Maslin, Ohio. I mean, he saw me in March. Um, you know, and I did I did well. You know, I didn't didn't freeze, didn't mess up, did you know, just had a a set, you know, and it was good, but it wasn't like as good as, you know, obviously uh, some of the other folks there. And then he saw me at the finals, not the finals. I wasn't in like the finals finals. I was in the top 101 um competing in Vegas, but he saw me there and he saw me perform and he was just like, Aaron, I have to tell you this is like night and day he's like and that was in september um god math is so hard right now <laughs> <laughs> i think it was like, so i guess like over like six seven months you know he right. saw a huge like like so he's like this is night and day this is so different he was like it's he's like it's the same content because you're like bringing like you're you're just continually working on it and being like this is my seven minutes okay what am i like what can i add how can i make myself more personable like how do i uh, like and you're fucking with it all year and he's just like this is so much better like this is awesome to watch this was yeah. great it was like it was so cool to hear because you know i think a lot of time you don't you don't think a lot of people are are listening or following you know Right, right. That they're not um, tuned in, like to, tuned in to, enough to, to even realize remember. It. Right, like, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like to even remember your stuff and like 
let alone be able to comment on what you were like six months ago to, you know, to then. And it was just a really cool way to feel seen. Yeah. That's awesome. And to get that kind of like the compliment from some, you know, just, it's gotta be so encouraging to know that you're on the right path and you're evolving the right way and, and, you know, you're getting better, you know, progress. Absolutely. (laughs) That was, that was huge. That was, it was just sort of like, okay, I'm doing it. Like I'm, I'm doing it. Like this feels great. Like (laughs) it sucks sometimes (laughs) as you know, (laughs) that's the thing, you, you know, like, if the if there was no struggle, the the payoff wouldn't be as sweet, you know. So, oh, yeah. so and and that's it is hard work, and it not only that it's it's hard work to, you know, from everything writing, you know, get performed. But I think it it just the, the motivation to go and to do it, and to you know work those crowds as the Mormons, <laughs> or <laughs> or you know. <laughs> And, and pay the dues, put the dues in like that, you know, only is going to always make you stronger and always going to make you a better performer. And, and uh, in, in the end, so, you know, kudos to you and, and all you've accomplished in this very short time. Uh, what did you place again in the comedy world series? Uh, 54th out of that, uh, about 700. That's huge. Yeah. It and like, I, I remember saying it to someone, I was like, yeah, I got 54. They were like, oh, all right. And I was just like, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not 54th out of 54 here. It's yeah, 700 people. <laughs> Do the math. That's huge. That That's was huge. Uh, that was one of those moments where I think I was a little, uh, a little shocked. You know, I'd, I'd like to come on here and say, oh, I knew I was going to do great. Like, I. <laughs> I was, you know, at that point, you know, when I first applied, I had only been in front of the, in an, on an actual stage for six months. Um, I had been doing, you know, yeah. virtually for a year and a half at that point, but man, it was, uh, it was a little terrifying. It was very, it was, it was a little, it was a little overwhelming. It was, uh, I did not quite, I did not really feel like I had earned this yet you know a lot of people kind of put in your head like oh well you need to be doing comedy for like seven to ten years before you know you could even be doing something like that and I I was just sort of like well they'll tell me if I'm ready like you know what I mean like yeah if my tape sucks and they're just like yeah you're not ready like then I'm not ready like um but it was a good it was a good tape um it you know performed well and it paid off and it was good it's in a it's a wonderful credit to have and to be able to say that i was a part of something so large you know across the country and all the experience of that man it's just like a it's got to feel like a whirlwind and just a, like the best of times and and uh you know the future is bright you know mm-hmm. absolutely <laughs> it's too damn hot it's too damn loud there's too many people in this crowd there's only one thing left to do i need to talk to your manager right fucking now now thank you this is aaron law comedy guys have a great night thank you so much aaron for taking the time to talk to me you're an awesome person hilarious i can't wait to see some Coella deville uh material <laughs> coming your way <laughs> um but yeah and um yeah you you are definitely a missile and uh (laughs) (laughs) so uh tell everybody where they could find you follow you and and watch your stuff absolutely um so as everyone just as a reminder in case you're listening and not watching uh my last name is spelled l-o-k um so for facebook and instagram it's at erin lock comedy and then on tiktok it's simply at erin lock very good (laughs) <laughs> well you're the best thanks again Aaron. uh hope to see you out here soon in long island when you come oh, back yeah. and visit us all absolutely don thank you so much for having me i had such a great time chatting with you yeah you're the best thanks again Aaron lock everybody <laughs>